Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about personal projects. So let's get into it. So the question in question was a reply on a, on a video I made just a little while ago. Hello Frederick, thank you for the information. Uh, yeah, I remember now. This uh, this person had asked about working at Amazon and asking for help and feeling a little bit like an imposter. I will start asking more for help when I get blocked, and I will figure out the basics before jumping to advanced things. During school, I also didn't did not make personal projects. Could this be a reason I feel really behind? Yes, most likely. It's definitely. I would guess so, uh, because uh, so the way that I try to describe things for uh, new software developers is that uh, the schools uh, usually, not all of them, because there there's it ranges. But the theory of computer science or software development and so forth. These are very useful things to have. You should have them because they make you a better software developer. They make it so that you, like, you have the mental tooling to create the right abstractions and the right data structures and the right algorithms and how to like do architecture, etc., etc. It gives you that part. But uh, the other part, which is to actually be able to execute, to use all the tools, learn all the CLIs, all the like uh, different frameworks, etc., etc. That's something that cannot be under underestimated. Like it cannot be underestimated. It is very, very important. I would, uh, if you really bend my arm, I would say it's more important. Uh, the reason being because when it comes to actually shipping code, when you take your first job or I mean even if it's not your first or even if you're a super senior experience and you'll see this uh, uh, even in the most experienced uh, this is actually what happens in many cases you have uh, architects or like people who like all they can do is talk they know quote they quote unquote know system design but it's just at a, at a theoretical level if you ask them to set it up to make the thing they can't. They only understand it in theory, and so unless their job is, as I said, to be an architect, where they don't do that, they just design things. Well, then they're useless to the company because it's not just about knowing the theory behind something. It is having hands-on experience doing it. It's uh, with another analogy. It's similar to learning martial arts or something like that from a book. If you never do it, if you never practice, you're not going to be able to throw a punch or like kick or whatever you're doing, right? Uh, you have to practice the motions. And it's the same thing with software development. And that's why personal projects is, uh, I argue, the most important thing that you can do. These projects, they don't have to be big. They don't have to be advanced uh, at all. Like. Uh, they can be like single file projects it doesn't matter because what they're intended to do for you is to give you comfort with making things with the tools that you need think of it as uh, you know doing like a hobby carpentry or something like that it's just something you do to play around with some hammers or saws or knives or like uh, whatever you might have right and then after you do that for long enough it's gonna be something you just do for fun and then it turns out that hey those skills actually transfer into like an actual profession and that's exactly the way you should think about this it's just you playing around with something it doesn't matter if it's a throwaway thing I mean guys a, a simple thing like creating a single script that does something fun uh, or like a fake server that just connects to a database to just so that you can learn from that process you can think of it as uh, like you know those kids who like they pick apart a radio or they pick apart a television just to see how it works they don't know maybe how all of this stuff 
like is like what all of it is made from or like how every single little detail works they're just curious about figuring out some stuff because every time you pick apart something or every time you experiment or do a small person project or something you're going to get some learnings from it I mean I do that th I do it as well guys I've been doing it for years so it's something it is the best way to learn like uh, for me right now as an example I'm taking a course on machine learning and well the uh, rea like the most of the things that I'm experimenting with now is like silly little things I'm basically composing sm very simple models that can do some basic predictions and a lot of like feature engineering things where it's like I've been coding for years now, but I still don't understand how some of the like because Python, for example, and a lot of those libraries that they use is very new to me. I don't really understand exactly how the syntax is supposed to work and so forth. It doesn't feel intuitive to me. So what do I do? Well, I pull up uh, like a, like a, like an editor or like a terminal. In this case, it's Jupyter Notebook for this specific court. And I try some stuff out. I go and to to look at the documentation, and I go, okay, I need to make these transforms. I need to change around some of the ta the tables that I have here. Okay, cool. If I do this, what happens? If I do that, what happens? And then you just sit there and you feel like the dumbest motherfucker has ever lived for a very long time. And trust me, it doesn't get easier when you sort of in the back of the, your head knows. Today at work, I did things that were much, much more advanced than this, but I still can't figure out how to filter this damn array here because this thing that's called a data frame works completely different from an array. You know, these sorts of things, right? Uh, and that's always there. It's always going to be there, guys. And so that's why I urge you that never neglect personal projects or like making small experiments and so forth because lead code challenges and like all of this stuff that's great the theory is not to be underestimated but at the end of the day the thing that makes you actually get something out the door is if you know how to use version control do you know how to use your editor do you know how to well, I don't know which language you were working in here specifically but do you know how to actually write the syntax in the file do you know how to compile or just you know I don't know if you're using a compiler or something but do you know how to get that code running on the machine do you know how to deploy that code into some type of environment so if it's a web now I assume so that you can see that website that you built with a web server and like I'm assuming some front-end assets unless it's an API or whatever you're doing right like that's the thing that sh makes the difference if you think about it because you could and this happens guys you don't have to know a single piece of theory about computer science to learn how to do those things that I just talked about those things will be easier they will be better like or I want to say easier but you will be better at doing a lot of the uh, creating a lot of the features that you might be working on if you have the theory but the thing that is value building starts with those basics so if you don't know those basics and you don't feel comfortable with those basics you will feel like a little bit of an imposter or something like that because that thing that I just described that's the absolute core of every single day for the rest of your career as I well, love at least as long as you're doing the hands-on software development this is the basics it's the bread and butter it's what I do practically every day it was it's what all my coworkers do pretty much every single day so what I want you to take away from this is that uh, if you're not doing personal projects in school and you get a real job or if like you're self-taught or whatever it's very likely that yes you're gonna feel a little bit left behind because the first day on your the, your first day I can guarantee you after you get your computer set up and so forth like a simple thing is you're gonna have to pull down the source code and that's gonna be in most likely some type of version control system so if you've never really gotten used to using git or whatever version control system you were using that's gonna feel a little bit scary. It's probably gonna take a while because you've never done it before. That's why it's a good idea for you to start doing it because that is some, uh, that's an example of something that's literally gonna be your first day. I guarantee you it's probably the first, it's the first thing that you're gonna do. And then the second thing you're gonna do is to 
pull down all your dependencies for your code so that if they have any third-party libraries you get that so that means that you need a package manager or something like that where you can actually pull down the packages that you need somehow so depending on your stack that's probably a good thing to have done a few times you sort of understand how to do that and then the third thing comes right now you have to start your server or whatever you're working with. So you see what I'm going for. I'm saying that these things are there for every project you ever work on. And if you never experiment, you never try things out in personal and in personal environment, like a hobby thing or something like that, you don't get any face time with those 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 things. And that's why it's so important to actually just practice doing these smaller little things because then those basics they go from being something you've never done to something that you yeah, you don't even think about it anymore because you've done it so many, many, many times. And that is how you get good at uh, software development, at like the, the basics of what you do. And so if you're not practicing those things, I think you should because it's going to make you feel a lot, it's going to fe feel much more at home when you then go and do it in a work environment because in the work environment there's also all kinds of pressure and like all of this other stuff when it's just you doing your own thing at home there's no pressure you don't have to worry about you know not understanding how to use the version control system or git or something like that you can take as much long time as you want the important thing is that you just practice that until you feel like yeah I've checked out code a hundred times now I pushed some code a hundred times now I don't know every command but that's not important the important part is that you can get results have a great day.